Ha ha ha! Hi everyone, Twinthony Twin Twano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the newly revised version of Car Seat Headrest's Twin Fantasy. A Twin Fantasy? You mean like this? That's not a Twin Fantasy, that's a Twin Nightmare! <laughs> Straight out of band camp, singer-songwriter Will Toledo, aka Carsey Headrest, one of indie music's fastest rising stars, and the album that put him on the map, essentially Twin Fantasy, ah, a record that at the time was very messy, but showed a whole lot of heart. Will essentially landed a music label deal off of the buzz, the online buzz, that albums like this on his band camp page were generating. And immediately after signing, he began plugging away on new releases that had a slightly better recording quality. He eventually ended up dropping one of my favorite albums of 2016, one of my favorite rock records of the decade, Teens of Denial. This thing is just loaded with witty, profound takes on the struggles of early adulthood, the emotional limbo many 20-somethings probably find themselves in during their college years. So after dropping a record that pretty much went totally against the downward trend of most rock music today and, and sort of served as a reminder of what can make the genre so exciting. You have to kind of imagine that Matador Records would just let Will do whatever the hell he wanted. And <laughs> in a way it looks like they did, with Will's new album over here essentially being a full re-recording and a reassembly of his, his biggest and most popular Bandcamp release, Twin Fantasy. Now, despite the fact that I really enjoy Will's music and I have a lot of respect for where he came from, Twin Fantasy is an album that I've never quite been able to appreciate. Sure, while it is a Bandcamp classic, the recording for me has always just been way too chaotic, way too messy to really like all the way through. Even if there are some very loud, noisy, and experimental mixing ideas on, on the record that I think for the most part Will was just trying to make up for, uh, I, I guess, a lack of resources and equipment with just some uh, uh, very risky uh, Risks. So he comes back with this new version of Twin Fantasy, this reimagined, re recorded version of Twin Fantasy. And for me personally, it's pretty much improvements on all fronts. I feel like I am now able to enjoy this album as the diamond in the rough that it is. If you enjoy the instrumentals on Teens of Denial, you are going to enjoy the instrumentals on this album. They are a few degrees noisier by comparison, but I think that was mostly Will trying to do his best to to sure improve the, the work of art that he's made here, but also stay true to the original piece. He pays homage to lo-fi aesthetics while pretty much putting together a series of tracks that are very well assembled. And the end result in a way is kind of anachronistic. It's, it's weird to listen to and perceive this album coming after all the work that he's done up until this point, because it's kind of like going forward, but also backward at the same time. In comparison with his latest material, in my opinion, Twin Fantasy isn't nearly as instrumentally ambitious. I find the songs on Teens of Denial to be assembled a bit more smoothly, and personally, I find his lyrics to be more eccentric, hilarious, with these very vivid descriptions of emotions and scenarios that he's moving through. I just feel like with his latest material, we get a more detailed and vivid image and character portrait of the person whose personality and experiences are fueling these songs. Now, in my opinion, Will's songwriting has changed and improved by leaps and bounds since he released Twin Fantasy, even with some of the alterations on this album having to do with uh, some of the flow of the tracks or how the instrumentation paces out or Will is also making some lyrical alterations to a lot of tracks here. But still, even with all of those changes, what continues to remain true about Twin Fantasy is that it is a super emotionally naughty and difficult album. Drowning in a sad chaos of sexual confusion, love, drugs, and, um, uh... Youth. The opening track to this thing is a roaring, exciting song that really kind of sets the tone for the entire record, following cuts that are a bit more 
measured and based around a more simple verse chorus verse format tracks like sober to death incredibly catchy super compelling interesting tune as well about essentially a uh, misery loving company sharing in your emotional problems with another person all of these very <laughs> difficult feelings are condensed into a very rowdy lo-fi rock tune the song cute thing has turned into one of the most adorable tracks on the entire record talking about needing frank ocean's voice and james brown's stage presence to essentially uh, become a rock god, which is one of the many funny lyrical switches on the album because prior on the original version of the record, uh, Will was talking about Dan Behar and John Entwistle. And you know what, for me, Cute Thing is one of the few tracks on the entire album that originally translated pretty well. In fact, I will say I kind of miss the nervous energy in Will's voice that was on the first version of the record, but the pulsating ding a ding a ding a ding synthesizers and the very well-executed vocal harmonies that kind of bleed into each other really chaotically are a very nice swap. The song Bodies features all these echo splash sequence beats. There are actually a lot of incredible grooves and drum patterns on this album that didn't quite pour through on the original Twin Fantasy. Like, in comparison with Teens of Denial and nearly everything Will has done so far, this is a pretty danceable record. A very physical and visceral album despite just how sad a lot of the emotions going into it are. But again, Bodies, this track features all these echo splashed sequence beats beats, a lot of references in the lyrics to dancing. It's kind of about giving into this carefree, freewheeling, youthful energy. The song has a fantastic groove, great momentum. There's a crescendo after the halfway point that is super exciting. It's a bloody mess of synths and drums and bass and guitars. It's the kind of chaos where all the instrumentation is adding into it in a very collective and purposeful way. Then with Nervous Young in Humans, we get yet another killer driving drum beat, very sharp synth lead. We do have a bit of an outro monologue that in my opinion goes a little long. Uh, this isn't something I was super crazy about on the last record, but I actually preferred the previous monologue before Will totally just flipped it on its head and added something completely different. Maybe this new one adds a bit more to the narrative. However, uh, I enjoyed how meta the last outro was because the song itself is pretty meta, making references to art and writing and the creative process. And I'm loving this new version of High to Death, which in comparison with the old one, is so much trippier and very psychedelic and weird, especially with like all the reversed guitar. La, 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 la. I definitely do get the sense that the, the wallpaper in the room is spinning. It's very surreal and I love the return of the stop smoking melody and in a very dreamy fashion on the track too. Of course you get these multifaceted monsters on the album as well. These tracks that are 10 plus minutes long, have numerous phases to them, super epic, uh, beach life in death, and then Famous Prophets, a new and improved version of the track that features six more minutes of music bringing the length of the track out to 16 minutes, which now has a bigger crescendo, a nice little piano part, and overall I just enjoyed what Will did with this revision a lot. I mean, pretty much any of the issues that I have with this album have mostly to do with the original source material and Will, in my opinion, growing as a songwriter, growing as a musician since the release of this album. I still do prefer Denial, which in my opinion has grown on me even more since the release originally, but I love this new version of this record because it just allows me to enjoy this record for what it really is, and that's just a great album. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave a thoughtful comment in the comments if you're feeling full of thoughts, okay? Uh, over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Carsey, Headrest Forever.